let's see examples of electrolysis for um, molten ionic compounds so molten ionic compounds means that you're going to have an ionic compound for example NaCl in the molten state which means in the liquid state so because it's in the liquid state so you're going to have the solid ionic compound in this case it's lead bromide so pb br2 solid what we're going to do we're going to heat it when we heat it it changes from solid to liquid so in the solid state it does not conduct electricity but in the liquid state it starts to conduct electricity so label the anode and the cathode so if we look at the charges the battery the positive charge is going to be the anode because it has to be positive to be able to attract the negative anions so anode attracts anions and the cathode will attract cations so you see anode positive so this is connected to the positive terminal state the ions present in the electrolyte so this is the electrolyte in this you have pb2 plus and br minus pb2 plus because it says two here so pb2 plus and br minus ions that will migrate to the anode anions will migrate to the anode cations will migrate to the cathode type of reaction at the cathode if you remember how cathode reduction anode oxidation so at cathode you're going to have the reduction of pb2 plus so we'll start with pb2 plus reduction means gain in electrons so this is going to gain this is going to gain electrons forming pb so because there's two plus here so it's going to be two minus half equation at the anode at the anode you'll have oxidation so this is loss of electrons so c sorry br minus is going to lose electrons so which means that the electrons will be on the other side electrons are lost and this is going to form bromine element so br2 and because there's two br here so there's going to to be two here and then two minus here to balance the equation what do you observe at the cathode because we have the formation of lead here we're going to see molten lead deposit and what do you observe at the anode because you have bromine which is produced you're going to see a reddish brown gas now, when you're doing electrolysis of a molten ionic compound, at the cathode, you're going to have a cation that will migrate. So, cathode will attract the metal and the anode will attract the non-metal ions, which means that at the cathode, you're going to have the formation of the metal and at the anode, you're going to have the formation of the non-metal. And these two, so the metal on the, and the non-metal, these come from the ionic compound. Let's say ionic compound AX, so metal A, non-metal X. So if we look at the overall reaction, for the electrolysis of lead bromide so you have lead bromide which is going to split to give you lead and bromine so this is what is happening during the electrolysis so in general you're going to have the metal form at the cathode and the non-metal form at the anode let's see this table so here you have different examples of molten electrolytes so if we have sodium iodide you'll have sodium at the cathode and iodine at the anode here um, i haven't included the state symbol if you want you can include it normally this is going to be liquid state the metal will be in the liquid state and the <coughs> 
non metal should be in the gaseous state but the state of the metal is going to depend on the temperature of the electrolyte if the melting point of that metal is lower than the temperature of the electrolyte it's going to be liquid else it's going to be uh, a solid so it will depend so you can ignore it unless it asks you to include state symbols lead to iodide you're going to have the metal lead at the cathode and the non-metal iodine at the anode so you're going to have pbi2 splitting into pb and iodine if you still remember iodine is diatomic because it's a halogen so these are the elements at the cathode and elements at the anode and the overall equations let's see the mcqs Metals extracted from their molten chlorides using electrolysis. What is formed at each electrode? The anode will have the non-metal. The cathode will have the metal. So, it's talking about chlorides. So, at the anode, you will have the chlorine. And at the cathode, you will have the metal. Statement about electrolysis. Um, let to bromide so at the cathode you will have lead at the anode you will have bromine which is a reddish brown gas so answer is c you have substance x that was electrolyzed at the anode you have a colorless gas which means that the non-metal should form a colorless gas let's see so um, it cannot be solid sodium chloride because this is not in, uh, this is a non-electrolyte. Uh, so it's between molten lead and molten zinc oxide. So this is going to form a reddish brown gas. So that's not the answer. Sodium chloride. Um, actually, we haven't covered aqueous yet. So that's not the answer actually. Um, and uh, Moreover, chlorine is going to form a pale yellowish green gas. So that's not the answer. While zinc oxide is going to produce oxygen, which is a colorless gas. So answer is C. The next question. Ions discharged at the positive electrode. Positive electrode is the an, is the anode. So it has to be positive to be able to attract anions. So this is positive to be able to attract anions. Anions are negative. So at the anode, you're going to have Br minus. And at, this is the cathode. At the cathode, you will have the cations. So pb2 plus br exists as br minus which element could be formed at the anode when a molten salt is electrolyzed so at the anode you're going to be having the non-metal so not copper not lithium not strontium but iodine